Hey guys, it's uh, 2 in the morning here on uh, November 22nd, 2017, and I'm going to share with you a frustration it, you'll know about when you have children of your own, but the frustration is that when your parents try to do everything they can for you, spend what we don't have in order to make you guys as blessed as possible. It's when we ask you to help out in uh, the house to do chores and you make a big thing out of it. Ryan, you were complaining the other day that uh, you weren't getting paid enough to do to clean out the closet because it had all this mouse poop in it. That got me upset. Tessa the day before yelled at um, you know your mom that she wasn't getting paid enough to clean the computer room where everyone sits with their computers. And I shake my head at that this and, and again you'll understand this and you, if you're watching this years later of course you do understand this now. But it, it it's frustrating when you joins so many others of uh, your generation uh, into thinking that you only help the family if you get something out of it, if you get money. I am constantly asking you to guys to go outside and do one thing. One, that is to pick up the dog poop and to do it every Sunday so that it doesn't stink up the garbage cans and because we get our garbage taken out on Monday. You've never once gone out and done this on your own. I have to remind you. You haven't been out there since November. You haven't been out there since September because I haven't reminded you. You each have chores. Your mom came up with this list called pay per chore and she's put it on this bookshelf. And it says clean the kitchen ten dollars, living room five, dining room ten. And your mom's willing to offer money, and she's she's, which I don't agree with, but she's like she doesn't know any other way to to get you guys to help in the family. And you looked at those lists, and each one of you, in your own way, <clears throat> our own time, I should say, have come to me and said that you're not getting enough money to clean it up. So our house is quite a mess. Yeah, you can look in the, the background here in the kitchen. Um, if your mom and I don't do it, it doesn't get done. Once in a while, you guys start out and cleaning. Uh, I asked you, Jaden, the other day to um, pick up the leaves outside and put them in the garbage can. When I came home, there were the three piles that the wind created from our next door neighbor's tree were still there. And you said you were out there for 10 minutes. Your idea, Jaden, or comprehension of work astounds me. Um, so I you said, look at look yourself. So I looked inside. There were about like this much leaves on the top of that. You said you took 10 minutes to do that. So... And here's what we do. Um, when I worked part time, mom worked all our money outside of paying the bills and having direct TV and internet and phone goes to you guys. You know, and most of it, twelve hundred a month now, is goes to gymnastics. Twelve hundred. Then you also add the amount of gasoline I have to fill up my tank twice if I take you every, you know every day uh, twice a week I have to fill it. so that's about 30 bucks each time so 60 um, not including what your mother spends for her gas uh, and of course you know we take care of you do the things we have to do as parents and should do as parents that's you know clothe you feed you but you never show any thanks. If I buy you something, 
get you an ice cream, go to fast food, you never say thanks unless I ask you for it. Um, and, and I look at this, are we really creating kids who are that spoiled and that self-absorbed? And we wonder where it comes from. Your mom tells me that you know she didn't do much in the house when she was a kid. So, um, as opposed to me, I did everything. Yeah, you know, I I've told you this before. I mowed the lawn, raked the leaves, weeded, trimmed hedges, took the garbage out, walked the dog, um, cleaned in the bathroom, uh, cleaned the stairs that went you know with a wisp broom, and yada 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 as a kid. And my worth ethic was I started working in sixth grade at Little Joe's and John's um, barbershop where I got a dollar an hour and I shined shoes for extra money if somebody wanted their shoes shined. And what I did in the barbershop was I filled uh, all the liquids, all the, you know, shaving cream and all this other stuff and uh, uh, Cleaned the towels, washed and cleaned the towels, and made sure they were they were available for the the barbers, and swept the hair on the floor. I made I got paid um, under the table, meaning uh, there was no paycheck. It was I was handed forty dollars every two weeks, and that was a lot of money for a kid in sixth grade. Um, I did that for about a year and uh, wanted to make more, so I started a paper route and would walk a mile to go and um, get the papers. A lot of times I'd come home from school, so I'd go the direction of the papers and it wouldn't really be that much out of my way. And then do the paper route and then you know keep track of, of who owed what and... Um, and go collecting the money needed and whatever tips I got helped um, when I broke my elbows my my sister and my mother promised that they'd do the paper out and they gave they they gave it up in a week <laughs> so I lost my job when things got better uh, and I healed um, I looked for another job and ended up working at uh, the library, public library. I got minimum wage. Um, when that wasn't enough, I, I worked at Suburban Associates. And Jim Sheridan, my sister's husband, worked with me. Um, that was the last job I held on to until uh, I moved to Maryland. Went, but, but, Every year, I had people who expected me to shovel uh, for them if we got a big snowstorm. And I'd communicate with that, say, you know, hey, it's going to happen. You still want me to shovel? They say yes. And I would have that all set that set up. I would rake during, you know, the fall, you know, leaves in people's yards, mow lawns, um, do odds and ends and stuff, all for work. And, and it's not as easy for kids your age now and your generation as it was for me to do all these things. But the idea of you working or helping out our family it seems to be a lost art from my generation to yours. And it's not because I don't have that ethic. It's because you don't. So... Um, I pick you up. I, I drove you today. It's a two, uh, today's Monday, and no, today's Tuesday. Sorry. <laughs> See, uh, I'm my memory. I'm losing it. That's why I'm doing these things. Um, right now, officially, it's two in uh, sixteen in the morning on Wednesday, November twenty second. Um. So I I took you tonight. Dropped you off at 4 p.m. It's an hour's drive there and back. And then picked you up again. I'm still hurting from Sunday. From preaching. And when you came home, Jaden, you went right to your computer and started playing your game. 
and I heard you having a conversation from 8 o'clock until you went to sleep meaning you're playing your game from, I don't know when you did your schoolwork but you always say you do Ryan um, you know went up and played with his computer to, um, Tessa went to play with some friends uh, Tessa you on your own came to wash the dishes I did not have to ask you that was good but the boys no help in the house and this is every day and so I have to beg and plead for you guys to do your chores unload the dish dishes wash them take out the garbage bring down your laundry you know and I know parents have this with all their kids but a while back we had um, folks volunteer from St. Mark's Lutheran Church I put on my Facebook page how our backyard was falling apart meaning that it was overgrown I have two healthy boys I purchased a lawnmower never once did you guys volunteer to help out not once you saw it overgrown you know how much pain I, I tell you know I'm living with pain you know how hard your mom works does it even cross your mind to um, to help out to get the lawnmower out there and when I finally get you maybe to do something like that you do such a crappy job and I think pur purposely that because um, I can't believe how you know moronic some of the things you do um, you do it such a bad job so that I don't ask you again the front yards pretty small I showed you how to follow the tracks and go in straight lines Jaden when you did it you were all over the place there was not one straight line you you know you left patches of grass and kid you're just about 16 years old you can't be that stupid so I take it personally that you just did that for a uh, poor job so that you wouldn't be asked to do it again if that's not the case then um, you know forgive me but that means you're really stupid <laughs> so I take it as the the other ones I think you're a smart kid I think all of you guys are smart when you when you apply yourselves I'm just sharing with you off the cuff my frustration the house is a mess um, and you guys don't care then you come in you say there's nothing to eat in the house we have a freezer full of food it just means that you have to you know cook it like we have a bunch of burgers sitting in the box all you have to do is put them in the oven wait for about half hour and you're good to go but that's an effort so you won't do it so your mom keeps buying junk food stuff and that's all you eat you don't bother looking or cooking for anything um, any food wise you just eat the junk so either your mom cooks something or I cook something most of the time your mom spends more money and buys you stuff from fast food and I told you and asked you please if she offers say no because we can't afford this you guys don't say no you just let her do it and so your mom spends and spends and spends money we don't have and uh, we have a refrigerator full of food but you didn't want to heat it up so you know I've gotten angry at you I've yelled at you guys um, it does nothing seems to work you know asking you showing you how to do stuff Ryan twice in the month of November you tried to cook eggs and I showed you how to do it um, hold on for a second I gotta show you this <clears throat> This is the result of Ryan cooking eggs. Three days ago he did this. Now I showed him how to do it to not make this kind of mess, but you won't listen right. And 
Does Tessa clean this or try to clean this? No. It just stays there on the counter. This is an example of the frustration of a parent, which you guys would understand in time. When it's um, when the, the the garbage is uh, full, it stays full unless your mom or I take it out, or I harp on you guys to eventually do it. Laundry, you guys throw all your laundry on the floor upstairs until you, I trip over it. You start to do a little bit better and bring it down, and you pile it over in that far room back there, all on the floor, and leave it for your mom or me to wash and dry. Um, I have sat with you and told you how much we could use your help, and you give me excuses how busy you are, but you're not too busy to play your games. I've even thought of just getting rid of the internet. That's my lifeline to minister to people online. But you you put your gaming before everything else. You get frustrated. Jaden, I ask you, Mayo, can you come here? So I want to show you something or ask if you want to watch a show together. And you make it seem like it's the the worst thing to do is to talk with your dad. Um, frustrating. Uh, the uh, well, I, I just wanted to kind of share this because you know if you remember me yelling at you or getting upset with you or shaking my head, um, it's because I don't I don't understand why why you do this, how you can say you love your parents and you act this way. And Tessa, um, when I remind her of things like you've done, you say, but I was only, you know, eight then. And then, you know, but I was only 10 then. Then you go, but I was only 11 then. Uh, you use, you use it the past is saying that that it was your age. That's why why you acted this way or did such and such. And um, you are doing better in school, and and you're working harder. And I think you're gonna excel over the, your brothers with where you're going, Tessa. But I, I wanted to share this with you because you know you're you're gonna remember things one way, and and. Uh, I'm giving you a lot of videos of stories and good memories and stuff. I wanted to give this one um, of this frustration. Your mom has been brought to tears on numerous occasions because she comes home, she works, and then you guys demand of her. Help me with the math. Help me with my schoolwork. Um... Drive me to my friend's birthday parties. Do this for me. I need this. I need that. You're always going to your mom for for stuff. And you not once ask her, what can I do for you, mom? Because you do so much for me. And I understand that's a level of maturity you guys haven't hit yet. Um, but, you know, I think you, sh I think you, you should be there by now. Uh, bring in your mom to tears or anger that says a lot think about this guys and I want you to understand this maybe you'll be able to figure out when your parents how to, do, how to get your kids involved but when people do things for for you that should automatically make you think, wow, what can I do in return? Not that you have to. It's just that's the way it should be. You should have a, a good worth ethic uh, as you get older. 
that whatever you do, you do the best that you can in whatever task. If it's washing cars, then you do the best job of, any, of anyone else in washing cars. If it's working as a cashier, then you do the best job there. Um, Jaden, here's something else too. You, as you're going to turn 16, you're talking about how you are going to drive and get a car. And I looked up how much it's going to cost for insurance. And putting you, just you, on our insurance doubles the amount of insurance, the cost of insurance. And I told you that. Does it phase you? No. Oh, well, that's just, that's way too much, Dad. No, I guess we'll have to figure out something else. No, you keep saying you want to, you want to drive and you're going to get a car and you don't care if it's going to create an extra burden. Uh, so to help with this, we've gotten rid of like, you know, cable TV. Um, we have uh, gone to resell it place for clothing. The biggie is I didn't real realize this because your mom didn't communicate it with me, but the biggie is that while your mom got money on a loan for her college, she spent most of that money to keep you guys in gymnastics. Put, our, put us in debt. She doesn't worry about the future. She just did this. And as a result, um, it's going to be probably until the day we die that your mom's going to be paying that debt back. What she should have done is if she had $10,000 left over from the loan, she should have returned it. She spent every penny. I was tr trying to figure out how was she able to do this? And finally I found out. Thankfully, right at the moment when your mom realized she had no more money left because the loans weren't coming because she was about to finish school, um, the judge awarded me uh, medical disability. It took over two and a half years of me jumping through hoops, filling out forms, your mom thought, you know, just as the lawyer said to us, it's unlikely you will get awarded anything. But because of all the damage that was done with my medical issues, um, the judge had mercy on us and, and is now giving us money, a medical disability. And Jaden, you and I went to the Social Security place filled out the forms there and we got a whole bunch of money um, which I'm so thankful to God for and this is helping keep you guys afloat for gymnastics and yet with all the money again that we're spending on you you keep wanting I want this you know game graphics card says Jaden I want these new sneakers says Ryan Tessa wants her new leotards and so on and so on and so forth. Then we kind of have to come up with the money to take you to Fort Worth to compete or to Houston to compete. Um, and all the money that is spent there, you just you keep asking and demanding and and we try to figure out a way to to help and so that's us we are loving you so much that um, we are probably allowing this this attitude also you hold it over our heads because you guys aren't the best you boys aren't the best students but you're really good in gymnastics and this could be your ticket to get into college because we're not gonna be able to afford the cost of college and so you know you just say, well, if, if you have said, Jaden has said to me, you know, well, then I guess, you know, we're not going to college. I guess, you know, we're not going to have a, a, ch a chance uh, to, for our gymnastics, and then I'll just play my video games. Of course, you know 
that we don't want that for you. We want to give you the best that we can give you. But you hold that over our heads as if, you know, you're going to be living with us for the rest of your life if you don't, if we don't pay for gymnastics. In December, despite the amount of pain I am in, despite driving hurting me, your mom needs me to drive you guys to Fort Worth. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't think your mom understands or comprehends the amount of pain that I am in all the time. But she also knows that she can't do it all. And I, I can't let her do it all. So there's that kind of sacrifice too. Your mom working extra shifts um, and me dry, doing more driving in order to help your mom rest. We don't do things for you to say thank you or to um, to feel like um, everything we do has to be, you know, paid back. It's just your mindset. It's just your the way you go about things that that is troubling, and I worry that if you remain this way with this attitude how it's going to affect you in the future are you going to have a work worth work ethic or are you going to find one job and then get fired and find another job and get fired and so on and so on um, parents are supposed to give as much as they can give I never had that if I asked for you know, money to go on a uh, a school trip. I heard the whole story. We don't do that to you. We just try to do it for you. It's hard for me to understand how you guys could have this, this poor work ethic. Um, but you're good kids. It's just it's just an immaturity that I hope. I'm sure, no, I'm sure you outgrew by the time you watch these videos. But in the future, if your mom asks you for help, don't say no. Don't give excuses of why you can't do it. Be there for your mom. Think in your mind that you can never pay her back for all she's done for you guys. I mean, not just the food, of, you know, food on your plate and roof over your head kind of stuff. But I mean, the sacrifices she has made. Today, your mom has been in pain. She's starting to go have problems with her hip and her back. And she needed me. That's why to drive and pick you up. She's not used to dealing with pain um, regularly, and, and it's been more regular. And she's a nurse, so she has to be on her feet. If she can't be a nurse anymore, then we don't have medical care. If we don't have medical care, then we pay out of pocket even more money. Since with me out of a job. Um, by the way, I worked part time for four and a half years, I think it was, when the doctor says I shouldn't have been able to, but it had to be done. The only reason I stopped is because I realized I wasn't able to do the things I needed to do as a pastor listening, remembering. Uh, when I made visits, when you're thinking about your own pain and someone's trying to tell you about their life and you don't pick up everything, it's very, it's it's not what a pastor should do. And so that's why I stepped down. It also hurt me just to kind of climb the stairs to do the altar. I, you know, Lord's Supper every Sunday. It got harder for me to write sermons. 
And when your mom said once that stopped, we were going to be in real dire straits. You know. Yes, if you guys were into gymnastics, we wouldn't be in this predicament because um, we'd be able to save the money instead of going paycheck to paycheck. But again, this you know, God has blessed you with this gift, man. We want to see it through. We want you guys to succeed in it. Your mom thinks maybe you can go to the Olympics. I, I don't think that far ahead. I think um, I think about, man, if he can help you get into college, then yeah, way to go. Both you guys are so talented. Now Tessa has joined gymnastics, and so that costs even more than cheer. And uh, if it wasn't for the medical disability, it wouldn't happen. Our government right now, in 2017, they're in a big budget hole. And one of the discussions was that they were going to um, take away medical disability, which would hurt us terribly. Um, we would not have the money. It just, just like that, it, w it would take away your chances. So I am in prayer that um, now that we are relying so much on on this this help uh, that it remains I guess I've said it all you know you know your dad I, I kind of say things over and over again um, more so because I can't be sure if I told you what I was thinking so I say it again uh, but I guess the purpose of this of this video tonight is that if I'm gone uh, and your mother's on your own that you don't abandon her that you don't just get so involved in your own life that you uh, don't try to see if you could help her um, even if it's just coming and visiting and talking with her would mean a lot because your mom loves you. If uh, if your mom is gone and I'm here, uh, even more so. Uh, don't abandon. I hear that a lot with with uh, ministry online, where kids just they don't care about uh, their parents who are suffering in pain. They don't visit anymore. They don't write. And when they do visit, they make it a big to-do about it. Like it's how much they're sacrificing. Uh, I don't think you'd ever be like that. But it would mean a lot to your mom if you put her first. Something I teach in, in uh, when I, I should say taught when I did uh, marriage sermons marriage uh, counseling uh, I would tell that the the guy and the girl that the perfect marriage if there was ever such a thing would be that the wife would give a hundred percent of herself to her husband without expecting anything in return and same way husband would give a hundred percent of himself to his wife without expecting anything in return that is the perfect relationship if you put that as your part of your morals that you put others first before yourself you guys will go far um, I just want you to remember this uh, so that you learn from it or have learned from it depending on when you watch it all right 2 41 a.m. 34 minutes it says on the little ticker right there and uh, means I've talked too much. So this is uh, me signing off and telling you I love you. And you guys are blessings to us. Despite everything I just shared. We, you are blessings. All right.